Sharia is sometimes controversial. People make an argument against it, saying that it discourages people from working and that we need people to work for society to function. So society would experience a regression or at the very least that we would produce less and therefore things that we give for granted would be more scarce and therefore more expensive. With the rapid coming of AI though, it is possible that we are able to produce a lot more, to increase the output and at the same time that a lot of people would be out of a job. So we might need, as a society, other ways to function that do not depend on everyone having that work income, at least in a transitionary period. Other times it is argued that it is very expensive, and indeed some government-funded pilots have been stopped because it was expensive. Finland, Canada, Spain, Kenya, some states in the US are some examples of governments piloting UBI. And the results suggest that it could be a valuable tool for reducing poverty, improving health and well-being, and boosting the economy. Honestly, it would not surprise me if it also reduced violence. Because once you have the basic needs met, you don't need to act out of fear or violence to protect or provide for yourself and yours. But UBI is a monetary experiment too. Give away money, see what effect it causes in society. And I'm sure you see where I'm going. Us in the crypto world know very well how to create monetary experiments. And there have been a few of these experiments in crypto. One called literally UBI, there's also Circles, and today's project guest in the hot seat, Good Dollar. In this podcast, you'll get your fair share of UBI from the hand of Anna and Hadar from the Good Dollar. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Paul and all of Diorg and Anna and your team for today. Um, we couldn't be happier to talk to you guys. The way we thought that we would organize this is we know you guys are a technical audience, and but Good Dollar is, let's say, a mission-driven project first that's really focused on making blockchain and crypto and digital assets accessible to non-technical, non-financial people. And so the way we thought we could start off today is to give you guys an overview of the mission, the vision of Good Dollar, and a sense of the components that we've built, both in terms of the protocol, the interfaces, and some of the design decisions we've made. That's both, you know, protocol and tokenomics design, but also, of course, user interface and ex user experience design as well. Um, and then Hadar is the mastermind who has built and architected all elements of the system. And so then people can really get into it and dig into it in terms of, you know, all of the different elements that we've we've built and hopefully answer all your questions. So that's how we'll run it. Hadar, do you want to just quickly introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. So uh, I'm Hadar. Um, basically, I'm a, I'm a developer. Um, as you heard, I also live in a, in a kibbutz, which means I'm a, um, I'm a socialist also. Um, part of that it was some aspects of that are probably in the tokenomics design and so on of the, of the Good Dollar project. So it's also an interesting topic uh, to cover if you're interested. Yeah, there are lots of cool technical uh, aspects to Good Dollar. So just feel free to ask away. So Good Dollar is um, a mission-driven project first. And the the goal that we've, that we've challenged ourselves to, to build is really could we, this concept of could we actually use crypto? Could we build a pub, public blockchain network that would deliver an actual scalable, sustainable UBI that could potentially support hundreds of millions of people receiving real free crypto every single day inherently on chain through a decentralized public network? Just to provide the context, right? So like global inequality is the challenge of our time. And if you're like me and Hadar who have been working, and I know many in the Dior community um, are people who've been working in the crypto space from 2015, 2017, 2019. Um, really, I, at least for, I can speak for myself, like what attracted me to this industry was actually the, the potential paradigm shift for uh, blockchain technology and DLT tech to actually meaningfully impact uh, the challenges that plague our world regarding lack of financial access and lack of financial inclusion. So there's this tremendous potential for crypto to actually reach people who are underserved uh, by financial services, who are unbanked, who don't have access to basic financial savings, investing tools, payment tools. 
But we also know that most projects in crypto haven't built anything that's designed to reach those people or provide them with a good onboarding to blockchain or to provide them with assets that are actually fundamentally useful. But this is actually where the long game is and where there's the real potential for this tech to make a real impact on society. And so the mission behind the Good Dollar Protocol is actually, like I said, motivated by crypto UBI and and really this fundamental belief that we need to let money flow to places, to the people who need it most, and where capital is the scarcest and the most expensive. Um, And that is a moment that, you know, we've been working on this project since 2017 and, and has really been looking to prove out that use case. So how we can use the infrastructure of Web3 to actually create a scalable, sustainable crypto universal basic income uh, system, if you will, really motivated by the fact that now, you know, preaching to the choir here, anyone who has access to the internet can get access to a non-custodial wallet And through using DeFi and tokenomics, we actually are challenging ourselves to sustainably create and distribute new money at scale. Um, So we've been working on this project since 2018. It's actually primary amount of funding is coming from eToro and other centralized exchanges. But the goal is actually to build out a public network as a public good that's funding crypto UBI. When we started, there were a lot of challenges to actually delivering on this, starting from the user experience. But I think most importantly, when we're thinking of the target audience for who's going to use Good Dollar, we were thinking of non-financial, non-technical people who, for whom it's not so easy just to like buy a hundred bucks of Bitcoin on Binance. Remember, half the population across the world is living on less than six dollars a day. So for most people, it's not so easy to log on to a centralized exchange or even use decentralized exchanges in in any sort of, uh, let's say, fiat onboarding ramp. It doesn't work because people are unbanked and they don't have money. And so the good dollar experiment and project was really based off of how can we onboard these people effectively? How can we create a system that's designed to distribute crypto every single day? And therefore, enable people to use Good Dollar to really learn about how to use blockchain, to learn how to use DeFi, um, and to support this, you know, what is actually a multi-year journey of people financially empowering themselves through DeFi. Um, We know that it's not, you don't learn how to do DeFi overnight. You don't gain financial empowerment overnight. It's actually a lifelong journey and good dollar is meant to be, you know, a key, a key step in someone's onboarding journey to becoming, let's say, uh, fully bankless and comfortable using digital assets and really critically um, build a protocol that's designed to give or deliver free money as a public good and that other projects, other dApps can tap into, build on top of and support this mission of getting more crypto, you know, getting real money to people around the world who need it. So in 2019, 2020, we focused off of building out the initial protocol. We'll talk about the token model behind Good Dollar, as well as um, the interfaces that would enable real people to actually claim Good Dollar every day, send and receive it, and begin to use it. We made some pretty interesting, um, let's say, design decisions in terms of the protocol. I would say probably... For this for this crew, the most important thing to keep in mind is that we didn't we, we good dollars an auto, auto augmented market maker. We never did an ICO. We never did a public sale or excuse me a, a private sale. There was no big token launch. There was no allocation that went to Hadar, myself, any other founders of the protocol or people who work on it. The whole idea was to create a protocol that's designed to issue good dollar tokens a UBI infrastructure ecosystem. We'll get into that in a second, but a pretty unique and important to what we believe and who we are. As of this year, actually last year, we're the world's largest UBI community in the world. So we've onboarded over 500,000 people in over 181 countries into Good Dollar who are using Good Dollars. Here are some vanity numbers, if you will. We've onboarded around five, half a million people into Web3. 
We see people uh, really using the good dollar tokens that they're distributed as UBI as transactions, which I think is, you know, a goal here. We want people using good dollar as real money to do real things. We'll talk about those use cases. We've actually built one of the top used dApps by daily active users. So if you check Dapp Radar, we have around 80,000 monthly active users that are actually logging in using good dollar every single day. And our token model has, you know, proved to be relatively resistant through this past bear market crash. And the price has performed as we would have hoped, staying relatively stable. And so the, the, in all, in all we are focused off of being a real project that shows how crypto can be used to create a positive impact in the area of financial inclusion around the world. We'll talk about the good wallet. We'll actually give you guys a demo of that in just a second. I'll log into it. But I think our, our user numbers are a big result of the fact that we actually made a lot of design decisions that are focused off of making crypto and the good dollar experience really simple for non-technical, non-financial people and exposing them to decentralization, you know, over time, if you will. We can talk about some of those features. We'll go into the dashboard in just a second. But I think the important thing that we should talk about is actually the people who are using Good Dollar and where Good Dollar is going, because this is actually the critical part to our success. So as I mentioned, the, the mission here was actually to enable Good Dollar to flow to the markets where it's needed most. We see retention happening in economies that are hyperinflationary, very highly digitally connected, and where for the most part, you have people who are eager to use crypto and eager to see crypto as part of their financial future and are looking for an opportunity to connect to others around the world and to use this technology to actually improve their own lives. I think this is these this is the profile of people around the world who, for whom DeFi is potentially is really going to be the most impactful and the most critical, right? So 43% of the good dollar community comes from households where they make less than $5,000 a year. Um, but it's a highly educated, highly ambitious, highly entrepreneurial community. So 30% of the people in our community are people who are what we would classify as micro entrepreneurs, people who are trying to build their own businesses and, and actually use good dollar to uh, support their own entrepreneurial journey. Here are some people that are really using good dollar in the real world. We'll talk about this, but people who are actually using good dollar as a uh, peer to a digitally native complementary currency, right? So we see Christiane, she's a Brazilian entrepreneur that's opened up a secondhand shop all over the world to buy and sell goods in good dollars. We have micro entrepreneurs in in uh, throughout Western Africa who are opening up mobile minute shops, buying and selling airtime in good dollars. We have Frank, who's a Cameroonian developer, actually, who's building all sorts of uh, DeFi applications based off of Good Dollar that's really focused off of community finance. So these are the people that are using Good Dollar and the technology infrastructure to um, actually improve their own lives and the lives of those in their community. It shows really the power of a decentralized economy and a decentralized currency. We'll talk more about the protocol, but Really quickly, Good Dollar is an AMM. It's based off of the Bancorp bonding curve. As new money is added to the reserve, Good Dollars are issued. Good Dollars can be sent back to the reserve and burned for CDI. This was based off of you know, the principles of the UBI economy that we wanted to create, which is that we wanted people to actually use Good Dollar for transactions. We wanted it to circulate. We wanted it to move, right? So we'll talk more about that. We also wanted a really flexible architecture so that any protocol, any fee, any source of money off of that's based on chain could actually be integrated into Good Dollar. So it's a very flexible architecture where we can actually take micro payments from a range of different sources to actually fund the reserve. Um, of course, if you want to, that means that Good Dollars are always available through the reserve, right? So. This is the price performance to date. We can share more update, you know, share more updates on the dashboard, but you'll see Good Dollar as a token has a really interesting price performance. It was designed to be liquid, relatively stable, but also increased over time. Um, Good Dollar is available on a range of different DEXs, both on Fuse and on Celo, which are the side chains that we operate, and of course, available through 
uh, the main good dollar reserve. And this is the token model that actually has people, you know, using good dollars to do commerce, building things off of it. It's because of this very interesting appreciation that we see the community members having the incentive to build on top of good dollar and to build with good dollar. And it's based off of the openness of the ecosystem. But also I'm done. Over time. No, no. Just one question, because you mentioned the C die, that compound die. Yes. Okay, perfect. Let me just check the the chat really quickly because that was that was the overboard the overview that I wanted to do was to give everyone an overview of the you know the system, the protocol, the community, and an introduction to a few of the use cases. Okay, beautiful, fantastic. So the only other thing that I'm gonna drop as a resource for everyone to check out in the group is actually you know, this dashboard that we keep updated in real time that shows the value of UBI distributed, the transactions generated, the number of UBI claimers, et cetera. And it also includes here all of the token modeling and the price action for when we dig into those questions. So I'm gonna drop this as a resource into the chat, but otherwise we're ready to take it away with questions. Beautiful, fantastic. Thank you so much for this amazing presentation. Very quick, very on time as well. Thank you, thank you for that. Let's, I would like to dig a little bit more into the crypto economics of it. Like, okay, why, why does this, uh, why does this have value? Can you, can you go a little bit deeper onto, uh, onto the tokenomics? Sure. So, I mean, I'll start and then Hadar, please jump in and augment everything that I said. So, as I mentioned, I'll just flip back to the slide about it. One second. So you guys can look at it. Um, so the, as I mentioned, good dollar is meant to be a UBI token, right? This means that it's actually, it's the token that we're using to distribute UBI in a daily fashion that is going to all of the members and all the recipients. This means that um, it needs to function more like currency than like Bitcoin. Right. So we actually designed we, the, the principles of the tokenomics were actually based off of relative stability. OK, so the currency needed to be relatively stable so that people would be willing to use it. We also knew that it needed to be liquid. OK, so liquid from day one. That's why even though it was going to be a small market cap currency, we knew that in order for people to actually use good dollar, they needed to believe that it's, you know, it needs to be back with real money. And so that's why AMM, why we wanted to do it that way. We needed it to be sustainable. So we also knew that we needed the protocol to be designed in such a way that many different sources of funding from many different let's say many different token assets and many different from many different sources would actually be able to all funnel towards towards funding one productive universal basic income and that's basically the good dollar reserve if you will and so as new money is added to the reserve from a range of different sources we issue new good dollars and as the circulation and as the usage increases in terms of the the supply of good dollars um, that's out there, we actually begin to leverage the currency and so create more demand for it. So the goal here is actually to have a UBI economy that is naturally balancing supply and demand. And while, be, while still you know, having that relative stability, there is still a market incentive for holding good dollars. There is still a market incentive for buying good dollars. There's a market incentive that creates the the you know, enough, let's say, excitement and demand and, and for and belief for people actually to build stuff on top of good dollar. And um, that's why the currency is designed to very slowly but steadily actually increase in value over time to generate that trust and incentive in the system. Okay, what are these incentives, though? Oh, you mean in terms of like, you, it, it's, it's, you mean in terms of the price curve? No, no, like as you said, there's incentive to hold good dollar, there's incentive to uh, build on top of good dollar. Is that like, is the, are they actual, like, what are the actual incentives that there are there? First of all, what we're trying to do is, you know, think of what are all of the different critical 
components of like a UBI economy. And then we're trying to design the protocol in such a way that we're actually enabling the, the good dollars to flow to the key market participants, right? So I'd say first and foremost, we're focusing off of, you know, enabling good dollars to fund to support community initiatives. We also have, you know, created a few new features that enable people to actually stake and earn in good dollar. Um, we're working on a few new incentives that actually will create, you know, we're looking for partners and protocol partners to actually integrate good dollar. And so right now we're in the plan, we're like thinking around, okay, how do we create the right incentive for other partners to build off of us? How do we actually incentivize them through, you know, enabling them to have their own UBI streams to direct to their own members of the community? And so the the incentives are, uh, you know, let's say, we're, we're, we've added new incentives and new good dollar flows in each version of the protocol that we've done. And the idea is actually enabling, you know, creating the right mandate that enables both the community members who are the most active in good dollar to earn more and creating the right incentive for other partners, whether they're protocols or dApps to actually integrate good dollar, which typically has to do with giving them their own UBI runoff. Hadar? What I wanted to add is, so a little bit more about um, how it's uh, it's implemented. So Anna mentioned the mentioned the Bancor uh, curve. So the way that Good Dollar is implemented, there's no Anna mentioned it. There's no pre-minting. The only way for you to uh, the only way to get Good Dollars, new Good Dollars into the circulation, there are two ways. The first one is to is to buy them from the from the reserve. Which is uh, based on the Bancor uh, AMM. Uh, basically, the Bancor AMM, in contrast to uh, to Uniswap, it allows you to have a single-sided um, liquidity, meaning that in our case, the reserve is held in CEDA in Compound Dai, but the other token, Good Dollars, are not held in the reserve. When you buy good dollars, the reserve just mint for you. It only holds CDI. When you buy good dollars, the reserve mints for you good dollars. Every good dollar that's in circulation, you can always send it back to the reserve and sell it to the reserve and get CDI back. That concept basically makes the token always liquid. There's no sh- such thing that there's no liquidity in the market for good dollar, which happens, you know, in the crypto space, we know that there's always a last resort buyer there that is the curve. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it also acts like sort of, uh, you can call it the central bank of um, um, of the good dollar uh, ecosystem, because basically good dollar, what we envision, you know, it's like sort of an economic system, economic framework. That's what we want to do. And the basic thing of an economic framework, framework is, you know, the currency. Um, so yeah, so it's always liquid, and that's meant to make it also uh, trustable, um, and it can go to zero, like you know we see in the market happens all the time when everybody dumps uh, everything on the market. And another interesting aspect of the reserve is that it has uh, something that's called um, the reserve ratio. No, the if you can open good.org uh, on Ethereum and try to buy from the reserve. So the, the second aspect that the AMM has is what's called the reserve ratio, uh, which is used for, we use it for two things. Uh, first one is basically to leverage, right? How do we create UBI? Whatever is in the, um, in the reserve, we leverage it and create more good dollars on top of it. So let's say if there is like $1,000 worth of um, CEDA in the reserve, uh, we can leverage it and to create, uh, let's say, one thousand and one hundred uh, dollars worth of good dollars, and those one hundred uh, good dollars, the the extra one hundred dollars, we uh, distribute as uh, as UBI. So that reserve ratio determines the uh, the amount of leverage that we can do, um, but it also determines the the volatility of the AMM. So the higher uh, the reserve ratio, the lower the volatility is. And this is also something that um, maybe, Anna, you can show it. You can show that if you want to sell to the reserve, um, let's say type in the, in the good dollars amount, you can type 1 trillion, for example. Uh, yeah, one, mil- 1 billion, for example. So currently in circulation, okay. I think there are 5 
billion good dollars in circulation. Um, and if Anna will try to sell um, one billion, which is a fifth of the circulation, you will see that it would still have not a huge amount. You need to connect your wallet and to connect to it. I know, I know. I'm having an issue connecting my wallet, of course. So hopefully you'll be able to see that even if someone tries to sell a fifth of the tokens in circulation, still the effect on the, the price impact is not going to be uh, huge. Um, and that also yeah. means that's why we, I think that's one of the reasons why in the bear market, good odds was doing relatively well, um, because there is no fear of run of the bank. You don't see uh, the price goes up and down with the tens, uh, you know, 15, 20% a day or something like that. It, it just can't, can't happen because no one holds like a fifth of the, the circulation. So yeah, that's what a little bit about um, the AMM and the reserve. Okay, excellent. Yeah, thanks for that. Let's have uh, one question on the more on the like on the value and sort of like on the supply or of this reserve. Garig has a question on this. Okay, I'll, I'll ask uh, Garig uh, Garig because I wanted I wanted to touch on this before we go on to the other side, which is on like how the how the minting works. But um, so, what are the incentives for? You said that it was bootstrapped by Etoro. Um, what were what are the incentives for the sources or the donors or or to to provide this funding for the reserve? So well, basically the most the, the basic incentive is just um, token speculation, like uh, and like on any other token. So since since we started, you know the token appreciated uh, I guess seventy percent. At the highest, it was ninety uh, percent. Um, so and if you want to invest in a token that also does, uh, you know, has a good purpose and actually has a real uh, real use case behind it, has a lot of users behind it, has a real economy underlying uh, underlying it, and th which is only going to get stronger, then you might invest in it. That's the, that's, that's the reason why most people uh, bought from the reserve because, um, you know, they believe in the, in the mission and they just invested it as a speculative asset. Um, we do have other um, staking um, staking contracts. So originally, um, originally we also had staking contracts for stable tokens that you could stake your stables and earn some uh, rewards in good dollars. Um, but right now we remove that. And basically, if you want to, in the, in the current staking contract, you can stake either stables or you can stake good dollars and you can earn just the, the governance tokens. If you want to have um, um, an effect on the, on the protocol, then uh, you can stake and earn governance tokens, which are non-transferable, which is also, um, I guess, sort of relatively unique aspect of, uh, of the good dollar protocol where the governance is not you can't buy governance right you have to uh, participate um, in order to acquire uh, influence um, we are soon going to launch on cello um, a savings contract that's going to have like a fixed fixed percent uh, fixed uh, five percent yield where you'll be able to stake your uh, stake your good dollars and earn um, a fixed five percent that's going to be launching soon, probably um, next month. Okay, excellent. Good. So Clara makes a very good point. Talked a little bit about the supply and the reserve, but uh, yeah, Clara, go ahead. Thank you guys for your presentation. So I wanted to know more about like how you distribute money and basically like how do you, if you do like filter candidates and um, how much money to allocate is Anna, in function of the, the wallet? Yep. Yeah. So, can you, is that all your question, Clara? How we distribute? How we how we filter? Exactly, and how you allocate the money to the yeah. end users. So, yeah. okay. So basically, we started as a universe. It's it's a universal basic income. That's the the basic uh, premise. That's how we started. So. Everyone can uh, can open a wallet. Um, Anna, hopefully, will soon uh, share the the wallet screen. There. 
and you can open a wallet. It's non-custodial. Uh, we use uh, what's now called the Web3 Auth. So you can log in with uh, Gmail or Facebook or your mobile phone. Um, and Web3 Auth uh, holds in a distributed system. They hold uh, the private key in like they split it um, in, into different uh, um, different validators hold different parts of your key. Um, and once you log in, you um, you get the private key into the into the web app. Um, so it's non-custodial, but you have very similar uh, login to any other uh, website, right? You don't have to remember any seed phrase or anything like that. Um, and then you have to go through a uh, face verification, which is the, the centralized part of the system. Um, because, right, we have to, if we distribute money to everyone, we have to verify that everyone registers only once. Um, so we do face verification in an anonymized uh, way, uh, meaning there is no connection between your wallet address and your uh, facial features. Which, and only the user holds his uh, facial ID in case he wants to delete it. Um, so once you are verified, we write you in a, we write your wallet address in a smart contract. And actually, it's a nice service for others that want to, um, that are interested, that need civil resistant uh, solutions. Um, they can use this service. They can also integrate it um, in your own systems, right? If you have a client that wants, uh, need a civil resistant application like voting or anything, airdropping, uh, it's possible to integrate with our system and do the verification on chain. Um, yeah, and so regarding the distribution, so everyone can, like I said, everyone can subscribe, can open a wallet, and and today you can also, you don't actually, you don't need the wallet, you can also just go to the uh, goodapp.org and just um, do that with your MetaMask and go through the face verification there. Uh, I wrote it in the chat. Um, that's the, and we also have, that's the link to the, uh, to the wallet, to the simple crypto wallet. Um, so the UBI, um, every currently it's every week. Uh, the good dollars that are uh, minted from the reserve are bridged over to the side chains. Currently it's Fuse and Celo. Um, it's bridged directly into a UBI pool smart contract. And that pool is simply divided every day um, by the number of active users. So if there's uh, if the daily pool is uh, three million and there are um, I don't know, ten thousand um, active users, then everyone is going to get I guess three hundred uh, good dollars, something like that. Um, yeah. So that's the that's the basic way that we distribute uh, funds. Um, originally, and that's how it also still works today. You have to claim good dollars every day. So I'm going to claim now. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're sharing the screen. Okay, cool. Uh, so you have to claim um, every day. And the thought behind it was that this way, people that don't really care about, uh, you know, the money uh, won't come in and claim every day. So only people that, that it would be really significant for them would come in and, uh, and claim because it's small, relatively small amounts, still small amounts. Um but actually it turned out to be um, sort of a, a, a nice hook, uh, which causes uh, people to come back every day, even people from, even people that don't need it. It's just like, you know, an addictive uh, habit uh, to come in every day and claim, claim on the button and see your, uh, your balance close. So one follow up on that. Um, I was just wondering like, if you are kind of like verifying that the users are real through the photographs. Um, one could just, I don't know, like generate face profile photos with an AI, and then from there, kind of like start claiming money from different user accounts, yeah. right? As you know, there's no no security is perfect, um, but we don't. We actually we didn't develop the the technology for that. Um, we're using a third party, and you know they have. Uh, also, other clients that uh, have to guard uh, larger amounts of uh, money, 
Um, so we, you know, we rely on them and on their technology. That's what they fight every day. You know, they keep improving their system to, to be able to detect fraud. But it's true. Some, probably some people are able to find ways to open multiple accounts, but it's still hard. You know, I, I tried in different ways and I wasn't able uh, uh, exactly uh, to do it. Um, so it's hard and no system is perfect. So probably there are, you know, a few percentage of, of fraud out there, but it's not something that can easily be done. You, you can just take a picture or even a deep fake. Um, uh, it's pretty hard to go... Uh, to bypass uh, that system. But we, um, you know, as I said, it's the centralized part of the system. We hope that in the future, there are going to be better solutions, maybe even more social solutions. Like we're big fans of uh, Bright ID. If you're familiar with that, uh, Bright ID is used by, uh, by Gitcoin. But currently it's just not easy and scalable in terms of it's not user-friendly enough and not scalable enough. You know, there's WorldCoin with the orb, um, who knows uh, what what the future holds? Hey guys, this is Nick. I just thought I'd jump in real quick. Uh, appreciate the presentation, by the way. I think it's a it's a great idea and uh, definitely moves towards the greater good uh, of humanity. So, um, but I had a couple questions. Um, I, I was curious just to find out your perspective on you know as it pertains to like regulatory changes around cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance. How does Good Dollar plan? to ensure compliance and adapt its system to maintain operations and protect its users? So it's a great question. Um, I would say that like, first and foremost, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna waste any breath here in terms of predicting what's gonna happen with the regulatory environment, let alone on like a global, on a, on a global level, if you will. But I, I can tell you, you know, what we've learned from experience, right? And uh, through my own experience in coming to crypto, you know, to, to learn how to operate on chain is like, I'm not technical. I'm not a product person. I was never a software engineer. I've like, actually, you know, you, you only learn through losing and you learn by doing. And this is something that I find really tr true to not just my experience, but the experience of like, thousands of people that I've met and mentored through Web3. Not everyone is, you know, even technical people get lost, right? But particularly if you're non-technical, you actually need to, you can't run a marathon on day one. You actually need to like build up and, and, and get fit, if you will. And so we actually see Good Dollar, you know, more as an educational asset than like a, let's say like a wealth building asset per se, compared to the other tokens that are out there and the other, let's say assets that focus more, let's like that function more like other uh, investment properties, if you will. Um, Good Dollar is actually designed to enable people to get into a non-custodial wallet. It's designed to give people real digital assets that enable them to work on chain in a non-custodial model. It's designed to actually enable them to learn by doing and learn how to, you know, learn how to operate in this model without money that they need to purchase or speculate on in order to get into the game of learning how to use crypto. And so it's designed to actually enable people to learn how to use these assets without having to put money on the table and risk their life savings. And there's a tremendous amount of value in that. And the, you know, we actually participate in a range of different um, forums, if you will, that work as either trade association, blockchain association, World Economic Forum, a few uh, Crypto Council for Innovation, a few others who have looked at Good Dollar, actually presented Good Dollar to regulators and others because they recognize the value of um, the education, if you will, and enabling people to really learn by doing. And also the fact that our system is, is designed to actually showcase the benefits of um, a distributed decentralized model versus a model where there's a gatekeeper that's actually permissioning who gets access to payments, who gets access to savings, et cetera. So I won't speculate on like how we're going to ensure compliance in every single place, other than to say that the way we, we've tried to 
build the system to be as, let's say, socially responsible as possible. That means that we position Good Dollar as a learning tool um, to all of our users. We are not encouraging, you know, vulnerable people or people without access to, to, to funds to actually speculate on this currency. We're not requiring them to put any money on the table and really are trying to be, and, and in terms of the tokenomics, we're trying very much to, to prove out a particular use case that enables people to begin to use good dollars as part of that larger journey towards learning how to use DeFi and having them have actual tokens that they can begin, that they've received for free, where they can begin to learn how to deploy liquidity or learn how to use community savings apps or learn how to take a crypto-based loan. And I think as long as we, we stay true to that mission, which is education first and really um, creating that environment for our members, that's the best way that we can add value to them and to the space and and also, let's say, mitigate the risk of the regulatory environment. Okay, fantastic. Good, perfect. We're we run out of time. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for for coming here and doing this presentation. If I think UBI has been a, a huge topic, and uh, it it will be even bigger now because we've we're in the middle of a transition um on a sort of like a like civilization scale transition right now with uh with large language models and and ai and all this sort of stuff that definitely are going to push a lot of people outside of what we have as our main sort of wealth distribution system which is getting paid um by doing work all of a sudden, very, very quick, a lot of this work will become very irrelevant. So UBI solutions are um, are definitely on the order as a, I don't know, if as a final solution or if as, as a transitionary phase to maybe something different in the world. Um, so, so definitely, uh, I'm super glad that we could have this conversation and that there are some people uh, like you guys working on it right now because that's something that uh, if I had to bet, I, I, I bet that we're going to we're gonna need it real, real soon, um, a, a lot sooner than, than what we thought. This is more relevant than ever. Yeah, but eventually the only way to, to fund UBI is if we, if we make, um, you know, AI a public good that's owned by the public, then we'll be able to use it to fund UBI. But if the AI is going to be still owned by private corporations, then we are just going to be uh, be their slaves. So we have to build more public goods, more democratic organizations, more democratic DAOs that actually control and govern those AIs. A hundred percent. We're tackling our portion of it, which is actually to create a viable universal basic income system that has the potential to really scale and with a token model it's designed to support that and that's you know hoping that more and more projects and protocols see value in that see the real utility behind you know the hundreds of thousands of people around the world that are actually using good dollar as money if you will to improve their lives and and are able to get on board with the movement and help support the cause and with that thank you very much guys we put a wrap to today's Diorg hot seat. Thank you so much for coming and presenting this. And um, yeah, we, we look forward to your success. Awesome. Thank you for having us. And thank you, Diorg, for all you do for the space and, and highlighting of the awareness and the importance of public goods builders. So thank you for that. Bye. I'll see you guys. Have a great one. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Bye.